This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Russian gas flows to Europe via Ukraine fell by a quarter on Wednesday after Kyiv halted use of a major transit route blaming interference by occupying Russian forces, the first time exports via Ukraine have been disrupted since the invasion. Ukraine has remained a major transit route for Russian gas to Europe even after Moscow launched what it calls a special military operation on February 24. The transit point Ukraine shut usually handles about 8% of Russian gas flows to Europe, although European states said they were still receiving supplies. The Ukraine corridor mostly sends gas to Austria, Italy, Slovakia and other East European states. Buyers in China, the world's second largest palm oil importer, are no longer big bulls in the commodities markets as they face an economic slowdown while the country chases a zero COVID policy, edible oil analyst Dorab Mystery said on Wednesday. China may not be the steam engine for world growth, Mystery, director of Indian consumer goods company Godre International, said at the Globe Oil Conference in Dubai. Strict lockdown measures to stem a COVID-19 outbreak in China's commercial capital Shanghai have reverberated through the global economy and supply chains, with some factories being forced to close and delays increasing at ports. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. European Union lawmakers have reached initial agreements on reforms to the EU carbon market, as they prepare to negotiate an overhaul of the 27-country bloc's core policy for reducing planet warming emissions. Lawmakers representing a broad majority in the European Parliament's Environment Committee backed most of the changes, the legislature's lead negotiator Peter Lees said on Wednesday. The changes would scale back a planned new carbon market to impose CO2 costs on suppliers of the fuels used in buildings and transport. The lawmakers agreed to apply the scheme to commercial entities from 2025 and only extend it to private consumers in 2029 if certain conditions are met. Oil prices jumped almost 5% on Wednesday after plunging nearly 10% in the last two sessions, buoyed by supply concerns as flows of Russian gas to Europe fell and the European Union worked on gaining support for a Russian oil embargo. Russian gas flows to Europe via Ukraine fell by a quarter on Wednesday after Kyiv halted use of a major transit route blaming interference by occupying Russian forces. It was the first time exports via Ukraine have been disrupted since the invasion. Brent crude rose $4.59 to $107.05 a barrel by 11.13 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 15.43 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude climbed $5.02 to $104.78. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. China's COVID-19 outbreak is suppressing the country's consumption of cobalt, nickel and lithium by disrupting transportation and cutting battery manufacturing, state-backed research house Antake said. Across China, automobile plants have reduced or even suspended production, Antake said, as cities across the country battled to control the virus. There has been a relatively large impact on demand, partly because of a fall in battery orders and restrictions on domestic transportation, said the research house. One measure to control infection has been limitation on movement of trucks. Shortages and low stocks in London Metal Exchange approved warehouses will help buoy zinc prices, but slowing growth and demand in top consumer China are expected to weigh on the metal used to galvanize steel. Benchmark zinc prices hit a record peak of $4,896 a tonne on March 8 on worries about supplies, particularly in Europe where record high power prices have triggered production cuts. Prices have since retreated to $3,640 a tonne, but that is still more than 20% above levels in September when the power crisis intensified in Europe, which accounts for about 15% of global production capacity of refined metal. Global zinc supplies are estimated at around 14 million tonnes this year. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Indonesia is seeking a balance between capitalizing on high global palm oil prices while ensuring food at home is affordable, a senior government official said on Wednesday, amid the country's ongoing ban on exports of the vegetable oil. 
The Southeast Asian nation, the world's top palm oil producer, has since April 28 halted exports of crude palm oil and refined products in order to control soaring prices of cooking oil at home. The surprise move rattled global vegetable oil markets that were already struggling after the war in Ukraine removed a big chunk of sunflower oil supply. Palm oil makes up more than a third of the world's vegetable oil market, while Indonesia accounts for around 60% of palm oil supply. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.